This one's coming from the archives, some tapes I dug out from about uh, 19 years ago. When the ATV group was relatively active. Now, ATV stands for Amateur Television, and uh, we were using FM to broadcast our television signal as opposed to normal television uses AM. So these were up on the microwave frequencies. We'll talk a little more about the TV operations once I get to showing that. Also, we're using data communications here. Now this again is really old. The technology has changed a lot since then. But it's still we're sending and receiving messages over the air. So here one of the members is setting up antennas. We have a microwave antenna up at the top of that tower. That's 2.4 gigahertz and 1.2 gigahertz. For our ATV yep. operations, we're transmitting in on 2.4 and receiving on 1.2, coming back from our repeater site. This fellow here, he's doing HF operations to see how many uh, contacts he can make on the standard shortwave HF bands. S-U-N-Q-R-P, S-U-N-Q-R-P. S-U-N, that's the call sign for the club, V-E-7-S-U-N, and the code Q-R-P means he's operating at reduced power. So rather than running at 100 watts or, or 50 watts, typically they're running at 5 watts, trying to maximize their uh, contacts using low power. CQ Field Day, CQ Field Day, VE7SUNQRP, VE7SUNQRP. The Delta Group operates at the old Vancouver Wireless Receiving Site, which was a military installation that was built in 1949 and decommissioned in 1971. The site sits adjacent to the Delta Airport, south of Vancouver, in Ladner, BC. This fellow here, you just heard he said he's going to bring out the antenna rotor. They get quite creative. In this case, the antenna rotor is a pipe wrench. As you can see, he's got his antenna mounted to the back bumper of his truck. And to rotate the antenna, he just grabs a pipe wrench and gives it a crank. They get quite ingenious on field day out here. Uh, antennas can be anything from a piece of wire to uh, a Yagi antenna. Right now, this fella is transmitting and receiving digital communications using one of the various digital modes that were in operation at the time. bugs can get kind of vicious out here, especially at night. So as you can see, the guys are sitting behind a mosquito net in the tent because otherwise you're getting eaten alive. This fellow is doing CW, Morse code, using a paddle key. The Delta Group has a very nice site because it's a large area, so there's lots of room for the various uh, stations to be set up so that they don't interfere with each other. Some of the other sites we're going to visit is going to be Queen Elizabeth Park for the Vancouver uh, Group, and we're also going to go up to, uh, to uh, Cypress Bowl for the North Shore Group and uh, take a look at some of their operations. KB7ARA, your designation was 5 Alpha QSL.
KB7 Alpha Romeo Alpha, KB7 Alpha Romeo Alpha, this is Victor Echo 7, Sierra Uniform November. What's your destination for that call, please? Now, if you look under the table, you'll see that this fellow is operating off of a battery. He's got a car battery underneath it, underneath this table oh, there, and he's completely alpha, independent, alpha, not running on any generators, just power from the battery. The whole point in field day is to demonstrate what you can do in the event of an emergency, such as if there was an earthquake and telephone lines were down, cellular was down, and there was no power. So the ham's all set up, completely independent of power, and uh, try to make as many contacts as he can. Now we're going to move on to Vancouver. This is uh, Queen Elizabeth Park. This is the Vancouver uh, group. Here's one of the microwave dishes that's being used to receive amateur television signals. And here's some of the pictures so that we're receiving. Tell me this, this camera you got there. What is this? Uh, is it still the same tape? Yeah, already? Nope. Oh, okay. I'm going to the next. That's where I'm headed next, too. Okay, yeah. Very good. Yeah. I've been down. The, boundary? I was down at Boundary Bay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And how, how are those guys doing there? Many of the guys that you're going to see in this video are what we call a silent key. They've all passed away. I mean, this tape was shot. 19 years ago. Here we go, they've made a battery out of a bunch of lemons. So how much uh, current can you get out of your lemon battery? Uh, we got about 30 mils at 5.5 uh, volts. And so it was enough to run a little Alinko, uh 70 centimeter handheld. Isn't that something? It's incredible. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, I tell you, it's amazing. Too bad in the old days they never thought of it. They don't have that many lemons. <laughs> There's lots in California, but uh, I, have, I have some of this, but uh, now we join the North Shore Amateur Radio Group up in uh, Cypress Bowl. This is where the majority of our TV operations were going on, and all of us had our cameras up there. I was set up up there too, and uh, we were all fighting for time using old modified satellite dishes to transmit and receive from. I went up there again this year, and there was only two, two stations set up. But 20 years ago, it was tons. Here's our control center for TV. Yeah. Fast forward a year, June 23rd, 2001. This is the 2001 field day. This year, the Delta Group abandoned the, the Vancouver Wireless Society or Vancouver Wireless Station's location, where they've been every year since then. This time, we tried to do it from Dee's Park, but we ended up moving back. But here's some shots from the Delta Group in 2001 at Dee's Park. Back to the North Shore. This is our ATV control center, or ATV truck, where Robert's manning the controls there. He can switch between different cameras and different sources and control the repeater. The repeater is actually located remotely, but we have full control over it over using a two meter radio to control it. it can change to multiple inputs. Here's our, our transmission site. We're actually transmitting on, I think we had 10 gigahertz going as well as uh, 2.4 gigahertz. There's the 10 gigahertz antenna. And the other one on the right is the 2.4 gigahertz antenna. So we were transmitting uh, two different signals. Actually, there's a third signal, third um, dish over to the right there. So we're actually transmitting three different cameras and three different signals from this site to various points to receive and can control the signals coming back. But uh, there, was a, there was a bunch of us on this day uh, doing our, our, high, our fast scan TV. Uh, some were going in on AM on 70 centimeters. Others were going in on 900 megahertz. Uh, 1.2 uh, gigahertz was the return. So there was there was uh, signals on 2.4, signals on 10 gigahertz, and 4:34 AM, and coming back up to the mountain on 1.2, uh, 
using FM modulation for our TV signal. So we were basically using satellite receivers, analog satellite receivers, to receive the signal coming back from our repeater. The neat thing about analog satellite receivers is, you know, even though your, your dish is picking up a signal from, you know, 4 gigahertz and, and 12 gigahertz, the IF frequency coming down from the L and B on the dish is in that 1.2 gigahertz range, which is where our repeater was. So we could just plug an antenna directly into a satellite receiver and receive the signals from our ATV repeater. That giant tripod you see there, that's my tripod. The camera I'm shooting this on goes on that. I'm using a JVC GY DV500, which was a professional um, digital camera that I was shooting this on. And I was actually on air with it as well, but I was walking around and recording stuff on tape when I wasn't actually doing my own ATV operations. Anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed a look back at the 2000 and 2001 field day operations, North Vancouver, Delta, and Vancouver. Thanks for watching.